Hello what's up peeps, this is the Geek Art is back again with another video where we will learn and master the art of blending colors and rendering like a pro in Photoshop. I know that you want to be really good at blending colors from the thousands of your comments I've received on this topic. So if you're watching this video, you've absolutely come to the right place. The skills you'll take back from this electrifying tutorial will take your digital canvas by a storm. This will be a less theory and more practical problem and solution oriented video with a hands-on learning exercise. We will learn how to go from this to something as sexy as this. Yes, believe it or not, by the end of this exhilarating action-packed video, you will possess the superpower of seamless color blending and jaw-dropping rendering skills that will captivate your audience and make your art stand out from the crowd. So make sure to watch this video till the end to learn the secret techniques that will help you achieve results just like this. Trust me, you won't want to miss a single second. So if you're a beginner or completely new to Photoshop, I made a totally separate video about the basics of blending colors in Photoshop where I teach not just one but four different ways of blending colors in Photoshop and you get to pick the one that you're most comfortable with. So I recommend you to watch that video as well from the top right corner of the screen. And before we dive in, it'll be super awesome if you like the video, share and comment to help the algorithm boost its reach and don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon to receive notifications about my future videos. Now let's dive into our exercise. So we have our sketch or line art in one layer set to multiply blending mode and a grey background layer below it. We'll lock both the layers just to be safe so that we don't end up painting on either of these two layers by mistake. Next, we'll create a new layer below the sketch layer. This is where we will block out the main shape of our subject with a flat color using the lasso tool. And for that, we'll set the feather value to 1 pixel. What it'll do is it'll add a very subtle edge blur or feather to our selection. So when we will fill that selected area with a base skin color using the keyboard shortcuts Alt plus Backspace and deselect it with Ctrl plus D, the edge of the color filled shape won't be too sharp like a paper cutout, unlike what we get with the default 0 pixel feather. You can see the difference between the two. So selections with 1 pixel feather will have a slightly softer edge. This will help in giving the shape and form a more natural look and also make the whole blending process a lot easier. Alright, let's take our time and slowly block out the whole shape including the arms and the torso on a single layer. We will reduce the opacity of the sketch layer slightly before starting the selection process. Make sure to have the second selection mode option on from the top left area here. This ensures an additive selection mode. No matter how many selections you make one after the other, they all stay and keep getting added up and you don't lose your previous selections. This is really helpful in selecting larger and more complex shapes, so we can take it a little bit at a time. Don't hesitate to undo with the keyboard shortcut Ctrl plus Z if you're not happy with how a particular area selection turns out. The only skill you'll need for this stage is patience. So be patient, take your time and take it one area at a time. Since it's a lengthy and boring process, let's quickly take a look at the time lapse. And once the selection is ready, press Alt plus Backspace to fill the area with the selected skin color. A very neutral mid-tone color, not too dark or bright, not too saturated or desaturated, somewhere in the middle. Next we'll create a new layer above the flat color block layer. Right click and select create clipping mask. Everything we paint on this clip layer will stay bound within the area of the flat base layer for a neat and clean output. Alternatively, you can also press and hold Alt and hover the mouse between the two layers until we see a down arrow and then click on it to create the clipping mask. Now before we start shading this, we need to plan it out and decide what the lighting is gonna be like. So let's say the light will be coming in from the top and a little bit to the front, pointing at our subject. So if that's the lighting setup, let's understand how that will affect our subject. We can simplify the body into a bunch of rods and cylinders. Our torso and arms are like cylinders but a little bit wonky with bulges rather than smooth like an actual cylinder. So let's quickly paint a cylinder. If the light is on the top then the upper surface of the cylinder will receive direct light and will be the brightest. 
whereas the curved sides of the cylinder facing us will catch light vertically in the middle since the light is in the middle and not on either sides of the cylinder. There will be a light to dark gradient from top to bottom and reflected highlight in the center. But since our cylindrical body also has a lot of curvy bulges which kinda act like spares, let's see how the light will look on a sphere in the same lighting setup. So now that we have a simplified understanding of how the light is gonna look on our subject, let's do a quick and rough speed painting by adding the basic shadow and highlight information on our subject. If you think of our arm as a combination of cylinders and spheres, then the parts facing down will have shadows and the parts facing the top will have highlights and parts facing us will have just the basic skin tone. Following that, let's quickly and roughly shade the whole body accordingly. There's no need to be clean or add details in this stage, it's just for our better understanding and reference. We'll add the shadows first and finally add a little bit of highlight. Awesome! Now that our reference is ready, we'll use it like a roadmap and drag and place it on the top left corner for reference. Whenever in doubt, we can take a quick look at this to easily figure out the light and shadow direction, shape and form. Let's start adding the final shadow to our subject. Once again, we'll use the lasso tool to make selections for the shadow areas of our subject, mostly the right side. We'll follow the sketch for anatomy and the reference in the corner for the volume. Once the selection is ready, we'll use a darker shade of the skin color and fill the selected area. But right now the shadows look too sharp like they do in cartoons, animes and comic books. But in real life, form and volume is understood through mix and harmony of sharp and soft edges. This means we now have to soften up some of the hard and sharp edges of our shadow. This is where blending comes in. Which brings us to the next step of color blending. We'll use the lasso tool once again to select and isolate an area of the shadow we want to blend and then select the smudge tool with default soft round brush selected and around 40% strength. We'll smudge the upper hard edge of the shadow to smoothly blend it with the skin tone and create a nice gradient transition of light to shadow. We can gently erase areas of the shadow to create a softer transition. This is the core idea of this step. We'll repeat the same step on the other shadow areas and soften them up wherever needed while we keep following the reference in the corner for the form and volume. For the tighter areas, keep isolating with lasso selection and blend with the smudge tool. Now let's create another new layer and add some more soft shadows wherever needed. We'll use the lasso tool to make a general selection and use the soft run brush with a large size and low opacity and flow to softly brush from the shadow side, like we do in airbrushing. This will spontaneously create a nice blend of soft and hard edged shadows simultaneously without having to use the smudge tool at all. This is another technique of blending colors. In case you missed, I have made a separate video where I explain 4 different ways of blending colors in Photoshop. Go check it out from the top right corner of your video screen. Alright, let's keep repeating the process throughout the right arm until we finally come to our sexy 6 pack abs. Well no, not 6, 8 packs. So we'll make the selections of each app individually, following the sketch and then airbrush the shadow. We'll use smaller size brush for harder or less soft shadow edges and larger size brush for the soft edges. Let's repeat the process for the rest of the body, including the left torso and arm. Alright, now that the shadows are added and we've done a solid clean job, more than half of the work is already done. Adding the highlights now will be a piece of cake. Create a new layer below the shadow layers, pick a lighter shade of the base skin tone and make it slightly more yellowish. With a large size soft run brush with low opacity and flow, we'll keep brushing the highlight color on the new layer. Since the shadows are all nicely blocked out on the above layers, the highlight colors won't affect the solid shadow areas. It'll only be visible on the empty areas and soft shadow gradient areas. 
Make sure to keep following the volume reference in the corner and add highlights from the top. We will create another layer above the highlight layer. Select an even brighter shade of the skin tone for the glossy reflective highlights. Select the default hard round brush and reduce the hardness to around 60%. Now we'll paint the harder and stronger highlights to add more contrast to our subject. And then use the smudge tool to soften up the transitioning areas for the hard highlight shape. Keep repeating this all across from the top. Hard light followed by softening with the smudge tool. Our subject is already looking pretty good, but is missing some contrast in the shadow areas. So we'll merge the shadow layers together, press and hold control on the keyboard and click on the thumbnail of the shadow layer to select only the areas of the shadow visible by pixel and not the blank empty areas of the layer. Press Ctrl plus H to hide the selection. Now create a new layer above the shadow layer. Choose a darker shade of the shadow color and with a large size brush, we'll brush in the areas of the shadow that will receive less light compared to other areas. For example, the areas near the armpits and below the chest and shoulder muscles. Gorgeous. Next, we can show some further muscle definition by following the same steps. Select, gently paint a dark color, soften with the smudge tool. Alright, this is already looking ripped and sleek. Let's add some vascularity to this. So to paint the veins, we'll start from a highlight area. Select the highlight color and with a small size hard brush, We'll paint it all the way to the shadow area and fade it out gently. Then pick the shadow color and paint it on either side of the vein to add a more 3D form. That's it, simple and easy. Now let's add a few more veins here and there, one on the bicep, one right between the shoulder and the chest muscle, and a few on the left arm, and finally a few on the abs and the forearm. Next we'll create a new layer on top and with a light grey color and hard brush we'll paint some strong rim light for more contrast. We can add some soft glow above that outside of the clipping mask. Can't forget the nips yo! Now let's follow the same procedure and render the top part of our subject, which is the upper chest and the neck. Here's a quick time lapse of the process. And finally we'll do some color and value adjustment with the level adjustment layer. This is a very handy tool that'll let you change the skin tone easily. Make it a much darker skin color or even a much lighter and paler skin complexion by adjusting the level values. We can even get the very glossy oiled up look of a bodybuilder as well. But we'll settle for something slightly darker than what we have just to add more contrast to the overall subject. And voila! So there we go, a smoothly rendered output with seamlessly blended colors and well sculpted forms and volume with shadows and highlights. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you learned something new today and if you did, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss an update. So that's all for now, see you on the next one, peace.